aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your of course, the Scarender. And today going up against, of course, my team, Mark. And in a very, very interesting Wi-Fi battle, Minersul, because he's actually bringing quite an interesting team. Here we're going to see, of course, Mammoth Mind, Porygon 2, Magirna, uh, Dragonite, Stami, and, of course, Sableye. And I'm using the same team as I used, of course, on my previous upload, being, of course, a weather-based team with Bustle. Um, Garbodor is going to say, but Gastron, of course, Torkoal, Tepecoco, Victory Bell, and Como O. And yeah, just from certain at it, I felt that Victory Bell is going to do a massive damage to his complete team while Sun is going. And since, of course, Sun is my bread and butter because he can't neutralize that weather effect, I need to be aware of, of course, Dragonite. Dragonite do want Victory Bell completely. So yeah, I felt my safest lead here was actually going for Bustle, mainly because I do believe Bustle dealt with. Every one of these without issue, of course, Save Light can, of course, go for that possible Will-O-Whisk, which is going to be super annoying. But outside of that, I do believe Bustle was going to do just fine in this kind of matchup. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. I'm really scared of Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is not necessarily a Pokemon I can deal. Defeat all the Elise, but I definitely need Kamo to kind of just to land a Focus Blast on it and hope for the best, because that's really all I got. And, of course, Dragon Knight cannot set up Dragon Knight or Dragon Dance, because that means that... Well, I'll probably lose. <laughs> it's quite as simple as that. So, anyway, of course, with all this said, let's see how this battle turned out. So, anyway, I do predict right from the get-go, he's going to lead off with the Mammoth Swine, which is great. Uh, I'm going to lead off with Bustle, but my Bustle do not have any fighting stab. It is a substitute set with a war, of course, left doors in Born. A very passive, super aggressive hitter. So, all I'm going to do from the get-go is actually get that free sub up. I was really hoping... You know, some kind of imagination here, I really kind of hope that Ice Gold Crash would just not able to break my sub. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of delusional by thinking of course so, but that's really my best thought process. So he goes to Ice Gold Crash, that's quite alright, and it's going to break my sub, there's no way around it. And I'm predicting him to, of course, be Focus Sash, so I'm not going to go for, like, the heaviest hit I got, which is actually Leech Life, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm going for the heaviest hit I got, that's Leech Life, and it doesn't break his Sash or doesn't bring him down enough. I'm actually not doing as much damage as I was really hoping for, then again. This might be, of course, the more of aggressive variant. Now, he will miss the Ice Crash, which is, is unfortunate. But then again, the lead slide does over 50% and would just as likely have pushed me over, you know, the edge would come about of HP, really. So, anyway, he's going to bring Clock, which, of course, being his a Dragonite. And I'm going for an Ice Punch. All I'm hoping is that it's going to be a KO because he goes for the Dragon Dance. I was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. But, yeah. Ice Punch does damage, it does a lot of damage, but it's not a KO. It is just a shy of a KO. It will make that worse if he were tell with a Fire Punch. Now, we'll take that, okay? I do believe Outrage would have do more damage, honestly, but at the same time, I think that was the right risk of doing, even though, like I said, uh, Otto would have do more, but then it might as well have been Dragon Claw. Now, since it didn't bring Sami, I was fairly sure that he was thinking that uh, I wouldn't necessarily be able to outspeed him or that it was a defensive set. That did, that did cross my mind. So Starmie now will come in. I can't take a Psychic. I simply cannot. The idea of maybe he just, that he doesn't carry it didn't cross my mind. As a Sweden, of course, size bulk. And he also the Thunder Wave. And here's where I realized I brought the, the wrong or border because I'm cursed over Toxic. I don't know why I'm cursed. But I am Curse and, of course, uh, Earthquake and Scald. So, in short, not too impressive. Uh, so, anyway, I go for the Curse. I think, eh, why not? Uh, I don't necessarily gain anything from it. But at least, you know, I thought, you know, I might as well try to pull it. As I'm going to try to go for now. Now, he will go for the Floor Cannon. Uh, actually, I think about maybe I actually went for Recover. Maybe I was that smart. No, I wasn't. No, I couldn't be. No, went for the Earthquake. Now, there's a plus one Earthquake, people, but my gear now is actually fairly bulky and will actually survive this hit. Then again, I'm a, I'm a Gore Border, you know. I don't, you don't expect uh, fully offensive damage up from, of course, a Gusterdon. You simply are not. So anyway, I'll take this opportunity to recover. I have to as Vision comes in. And here's where, you know, the issue is that I don't have Toxic because he gets Storm Drain. Issue with Storm Drain is that I can't damage him with Skull, which means I can't potentially try to burn him. And my best move is Earthquake. 
I do believe so, so I barely ever had to switch out. So I'm gonna switch in Ifrit, actually scouting for his kind of damage, as he'll go for a nice beam, I do believe. Drought is awesome, Drought is, you know, all I really needed here. As he goes for Ice Beam, it doesn't do, you know, a lot of damage to me, but there is damage there. And I kind of wish I had Stealth Rocks at this point, as it goes for Thunderbolt, I can't have Stealth Rock till actually Bank is open. But I go for the Fire Blast, I do connect it, it does nothing, because it's a Porygon 2. And yeah, at this point, I was feeling that, you know, I can switch in the Victory Bell, go for a Groove, or a Grove, and basically sweep, because I'm pretty sure Grove Life 4 boosted it kills Porygon C from this range. And seeing, of course, Thunderbolt and Shadow Ball, I didn't think it would carry Ice Beam. I definitely was feeling Thunder Wave or, you know, of course, uh, um, Toxic. But no, he has Ice Beam too. So that knocks out my Victory Bell. And I felt like a real shithead because that is bad. I went from, you know, I got this to shit. And so anyway, I'm going to try to force him out just playing around that. Maybe I have Super Power Hammer on, basically forcing him out. And she's going to bring not Emma being the save line. And I'm gonna be a bit a bit of dumb here because I don't see leftovers, which just automatically for me meant that well that means it's the Mega. That is definitely the there is no reason for him not to force Mega Bulb and try to soak in our leech life. And that didn't hold true. He had a Willow Wisp, pranks the Willow Wisp, of course gonna connect, and basically shuts down my gore heart. And the only like reason I have now is maybe, and I say maybe. That with, of course, Gorehard damage I put there, that I can force him to recover, which means I can bring something else to the field. And I have, of course, my Kamo, which, with specs in mind, has a massive damage I put and should have no issue whatsoever of KOing this Pokemon what, or whatnot. Uh, so I'm gonna bring Bernadictus, of course, being, like I said, specs, Kamo, really dangerous, as we're, gonna, of course, gonna see recover. And um, as stated, we're not seeing leftovers. I was kind of feeling, you know, what set could. Could this even be? As he goes for protect here, I go for Clang scale, which is you know an afterpot here was kind of stupid because he still has Magirniana, Magirniana damage. Did say that wrong, didn't I? So realizing that that is going to be his switch, and I'm gonna pull a double here on him and actually go for my um, what do you call it, Tapu Koku or Rain Bronze, as of course it switch out into Magirana. And um, that was really my play to make there at that point because. Even if he went for no damage output, I'm pretty sure he knew that he would have been KO'd. So Magyarna comes in, and I was barely—I was actually hoping I would, you know, I'd speed him. I wasn't sure, as of course a floor kind of would probably kill me. Not gonna lie, if it was Scarf, that would have been all kinds of bad. So anyway, he brings a vision here, and I was feeling that I, I, I have the least chance to do the damage output on him. Uh, I should be able to pressure him. I, I wasn't sure that it was a two-hit KO, but the Thunderbolt does. Roughly 50%, but the issue here is that I'm getting, of course, life from damage against me. So even if I could recover here, you know, show him that this is a matchup I can potentially win, um, it's not gonna work in my favor. I kind of felt that this is a never losing battle, and Porygon 2 just wanna go into keep coming, and at the same time, I have a golden opportunity here to bring, of course, my um, Garbordor. I was gonna say, yet again, actually, but of course, I mean, Gastrodon. And trying to get a skull burn on him. I do believe that's the right call for me to make because without Storm Drain, uh, this Pokemon isn't that threatening, mainly because while Pergon 2 has a respectful amount of special attack, I am super specially defensive, which means that yes, it's dangerous, but I am made for dealing with it. So, like I said, here, missing Toxic kind of suck as he goes to Ice Beam here, won't do anything. I'm kind of glad it didn't have a Scald or anything like or I mean, Tri Attack. Tri Attack would definitely have hurt me. And, and definitely like a lot of damage definitely done on me so I'm glad I can escape that at this point I actually don't know why I went for curse thinking about it uh, I do believe I go now for um, a skull here anyway he's gonna withdraw the vision and go to not Emma and uh, no I went for recover why did I do that why did I do that anyway so this is definitely not a bad like the matchup here is not good for me uh, same blank just kind of walls me, so I'm gonna bring Bernadictus yet again. This time I don't need to worry about any Pokemon coming in, trying to soak the clanging scales because, well, because of course Magyarna is gone, which means that Bernadictus is just all that more threatening. So, Specs clanging scale incoming, basically I wanna kill something, I have to kill something, as he shows that he's the Mega, and I was like, you mother, you really had me fooled. 
you were waiting this long to utilize this, you are a master, my friend. But even if he goes for Protector, of course, get the Mega Evolution going, Clanging Scale still is a lot of damage, and it's definitely not Shuffle Knob whatsoever. So while I just stay in here trying to soak this Clang and Scale, I'm just gonna KO it. So, mmm, there's that. <laughs> so we do KO the save light, which was a major relief on my side. Mainly because I didn't necessarily know how to deal with it, because both him and Porygon 2 can kind of stall me out. So his two last mon is actually Star Me, which doesn't outspeed me, and of course the Vision of Porygon 2, which also does not outspeed me. So he's gonna trace my overcoat, I, I don't know why I have overcoat. Uh, but I'm actually gonna switch out and go back to Salt Bulk, and um, yeah, I'm actually gonna try to speed this up a little bit more. Because this is gonna be a potential stall out, mainly because Porygon can do anything to me, I can't necessarily do anything to it either. My only response for it is of course the Scald, and yeah, I do get the first burn skull, which you know, awesome. That's so much skill involved with actually going for a first turn skull, I'm, I'm just saying. But yeah, I am fully aware of that, even with the Skull damage output, Shadow Ball are more likely to get my special defense drop. And getting the damage output over anything else is definitely going to matter more for him. So I go for the Earthquake here, which, as you guys can see, it doesn't do any damage. Like, I am glad he doesn't have Toxic at the same time that I felt that, you know, why why did you have Ice Beam? Because that knocked out my Victory Bell, why did you do that to me? But anyway, I'm just going to bring Bernadictus yet again, I kind of need to get some damage output here. As he goes for the recover. Now, I was debating, you know, should I and shouldn't I go for, of course, the clanging scales? I kinda was juggling that back and forth, or should I go for focus blast? I optimize for focus blast, I do believe that knocks him out as he brings in the Stami. Now the reason this is a big deal because I connect the focus blast, which is awesome. But I go for a clanging scale, I would knock this Stami out, but I would doubt really I would not have been able to take it. And uh, now I'm in a position here where I have to sack something again. I don't know what to do, so it's gonna sack Gorehard, hoping for a Psychic. As um, he goes for Scald. No, he goes for Recover, sorry. And uh, Recover clearly doesn't do anything to me, but he's gonna show me here that he only has Scald as an attacking move. And of course, that is kind of good, because that means that Gorehard can actually deal with his Pokemon fairly well. Which comes back to, you know, the original matchup here where I switched out against it. I had no reason switching out on them when Skull was his only attack move. Even if I'm burned, I'm doing over 50%. That's a support set, Starry, guys. And even at burned, he doesn't give a shit. Bustle do not give a shit. Which is... I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely... The, the love I have for Bustle is getting bigger and bigger. So while I'm putting... You almost knocks me out here. I'm going to retaliate with a Leech Life. But reality does strike me, and it does strike me really, really hard. And that is that he is a trace Porygon 2. What does that mean? It means that Porygon 2 now gets Beast Boost. Wait, that that is not good. That is definitely not good, because that means that he's going to get raised in his special attack for any Pokemon he KOs. I basically at this point needed to just... I needed to do damage, and like a lot of it, and I was really sure at plus one, even if I'm burned, that that Leech Life would have done more. It didn't. Which means that, oh shit, I don't I don't know how to tackle this Pokemon whatsoever, so I'm gonna bring my... my combo, and basically gonna go for the Clanging Scales anyway. I couldn't go for Focus Blast, but I couldn't risk it at this point. There was no way, way in hell I was gonna try to risk this. Clanging Scale is a 50% hit, which is good. That means if he tried to recover Stalmy, that wouldn't have worked. But it goes for Ice Beam, he's gonna knock out my Berenedictus, you know, without a doubt, there's no way I'm taking that. But, due to him, of course, go for attack move, not recover, not trying to stall me out, I actually will be able to wrap up this game with Rain Bronze. But we had a few scary seconds there, my opponent, Mighty Marky, just played really, really awesome, what a comeback! I mean, the first few turns here clearly was mine, with my Bustle just ripping apart his team. But he made it back, he definitely played the right game, he forced me out, he faked a lot, and it almost paid off. And had I lost here, I would have been completely fine. Getting swept by Beast with Porygon 2, I would have been great. But yeah, we barely won the, win this one 2-0, oh, I do believe, and I do only believe that, of course, my Tabu Coco was my last stop, or even have a chance of even trying to kill him. Because, of course, that Beast boosting motion would not 
have worked well with my Gastrodon whatsoever. So yeah guys, you know, to my opponents here, Mighty Marky, thank you so much for this game. You definitely showcase that you, you are a great player. And while I do, like I said, win this one 2 oh, I would have been fine had I lost because you played this game awesomely. That comeback was just something else. And yeah, for everyone who's been watching, thank you for doing your so as always, of course. Definitely a blast of you guys around, and you know that. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys, of course, in the next video. Until then, of course, guys, take care. Bye.